so cold. So cold in here. Is it winter? Because that would be awesome if it was. <laughs> Anybody out there? Ow! Robbie! Ow! Feels like winter, so I'm dressed like winter. Corey Spicer, good to see you, buddy. Heslop, aside today. Good to see you, man. Jay Menaberry's on here. 411, that's the original, too. Tatum's on here. All right. Yo, hey, everybody. I am dressed this way because. It feels like winter. Hi, can you hear me? I don't know what's going on. I seem to have a bad connection. One sec. Can you hear me now? I gotcha. I can hear you kind of, you're glitching a bit. Dave, I think you got to get closer to your router. I got to move. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit. Keep trying. Okay, I'm uh, hang uh, hang tough. I'm going to get an umbrella. I got to get an umbrella. Technical issues, folks. Now can I you hear me better? Yeah, kind of. I got to go all the way out to the Holy cow. <laughs> You know, uh, Conan never has this problem. <laughs> what are you, what's with the get up, Dave? Well, I'm talking to you, so I, uh, here's, <laughs> I, I gotta try and look my best. I like those Oakleys. There you go, that's why nice. I wore them. Nice pick, good model. <laughs> okay, you, I had to bring a lot of crap out here. So here, I'll take my goggles off. <laughs> okay, look, I had to get my umbrella because it is pouring out here. And I, you know, when you talk to someone as rad as you, you cannot do it from being inside. <laughs> How, How are, are you, you, Dave? I am doing, uh, everything's going to get wet, but that's okay. Um, I got a carbon fiber umbrella, you can see. That's how fancy I am. Oh, you're not messing around. You must be from Squamish or something. Yeah, that tells you I have a four-year-old. When I walk, I walk. We walk. <laughs> um, hey, where are you right now? I'm in Pemberton. It's raining up here, too. It, it, is it pouring? Because it, it's pouring. Yeah, it's coming down, but it's good. We needed this. I'm welcoming these rains because we've ha already had a couple forest fires. So, Yeah, I hear you. We did. We had that one in Squamish. So anyway, first of all, I want to welcome, let me turn this up, Tatum Minogue to the show. <laughs> Woo! What, an, what an honor it is to have you. Uh, especially, it kind of sucks this year because everything got cut short. But we're, we're making up with it for these shows. So now people are going to get to know more about you because you're really rad. Thanks, Dave. I'm so stoked to be here and to be on this team. What an honor. I mean, I wish it was a better first winner for me as a, one of the Skidoo ambassadors, but didn't quite, you know, get the ending we all want and hoped those spring, those long spring days sledding, but next season. Yeah, well, you know what? You're you're so rad. Even what, even though this year wasn't complete, it was still rad. Yeah, and, can't complain and we, too we much. got to, we got to go to Cancun, and that was that was rad. Unbelievable! <laughs> Everybody's like, "Wait, you're going to Cancun for ski do?" Like, they, no one could wrap their heads around it. I'm like, I yeah, <laughs> we, I'm spoiled. <laughs> yeah, we we get that all the time, and just to let everybody know again, we did talk about this before, but. 
we go down to a warm place because no dealer or better yet, no dealer's wives or dealer's husbands, because there's lots of women that own the businesses, want to go to a cold place to look at snowmobiles. We don't get to ride them. So we don't want to go to a frozen place. We want to go to a warm place that we can hang out and uh, drink beers and talk about all the rad new snowmobiles and gear. That's why we always go to a warm place. Hey, so, we did have that VR set up, though, with the turbo. How good was that? That, like, the virtu we had a virtual reality, for those of you that are tuned in, um, set up for a turbo, and it was one of the coolest experiences. Like, I, I didn't think much of it, and I kind of jumped on it and put the goggles on, and it was, like, the funnest ride of my life. I was, like, screaming and, like, losing balance. I was, like, almost sick at some points it was it was wild <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna simulate you oh 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 yeah oh i think it's i true. just ran over some of my skier friends Woo! <laughs> pretty uh, much exactly how it sounded <laughs> that was and and that's how we all sounded it was now this vr is not a normal vr this thing is like a million dollar virtual reality it is really like it is you almost get sick because it's so realistic of i mean it's over realistic of of riding i thought it was crazy yeah they had the wind and the sound effects like everything it was what an experience yeah super super cool okay so i want to thank all the people for joining tonight and um i want to uh i want you to introduce yourself who you are because you do so many cool things um, I want to tell, I want you to people to tell you what your job is. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know me, my name's Tatum Minode and I'm a professional backcountry skier. I live in Pemberton, British Columbia. And yeah, I, I'm ski newest ambassador. I've been on the team for one year now. And basically I use my snowmobile as a tool to access the mountains in BC and film my video parts and my ski movies. And uh, yeah, it's the best, best thing I could have in the most productive way to get into the best ski train here in the backcountry. So I'm very lucky to do what I get to do. Yeah, and you're also a really good rider too. So you come on, tell us a little more. Yeah, I've been sledding now for seven years. I think I'm on my my fifth or s fifth snowmobile or so. Um, yeah, next season will be eight years. So yeah, I've definitely like put my time in um, with it. It wasn't an easy easy skill to learn right off the bat. Definitely a steep learning curve. But um, once that T motion came out, it was just a total game changer for me. Like. I learned on an 09 with like the big wide chassis or and the big chassis and the wide skis. And I was just like, couldn't turn that thing for my life. And then as soon as the team ocean came out, I was just like, boom, totally connected with it. And yeah, now the, now when I ride a snowmobile, it's just kind of like a part of me, you know, it's like, I don't think about it. You kind of just, with the new slides, you just look where you want to go and the, the ski dudes just go there. It's crazy. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's kind of like skiing, right? You just you just think, and it does. Totally. And um, so also, you and I will agree, like 2013 was really, I remember I had an XM in 2012 when we were coming out with it, and I remember riding it for the first time, and I was like, oh, my, people are going to be blown away at this. And it really was, uh, especially for me, too, because I'm not a big guy. Um, and a lot of women riders is when they really started, not that they didn't love skidoo before, but when it really clicked because the snowmobile just became an extension like skis are for you, snowboards are for you and other people, um, is it just became an extension and allowed you to just do what you wanted to do by thinking what you wanted to do, not having to fight your way through a lot of stuff. Oh, for sure. And that's kind of like what I hear a lot back before team ocean was like well i'm not a 200 pound dude i can't muscle these machines around the mountains and now it's like there's no excuse because they just do it for you and i think yeah it's just as easy as a female to to get into snowmobiling as it is being a male with the technology and how far things have come yeah it's almost harder being a really big guy now because they have to like 
they before they could just lean in and do stuff and now they overdo stuff because they have all that weight that they kind of have to control and muscle power whereas we're like a little efficient beings you just have to like tap yourself around totally hey uh tatum you know it's seven o'clock and we do rev for support i know you do it in pemberton so we're gonna ask you to make some noise um I got something that's different than noise because I have a four-year-old and I got this thing here. Do you know what this is? What is it? It's a bubble maker, baby. <laughs> nice. Yeah. When you, um, when you have a four-year-old and they want bubbles every day and you're sick and tired of dipping that crappy little stick into the bu bubble thing and trying to get bubbles to satisfy, you get a bubble machine like this. That's, then, look at that. That is a party right there. I need one of those. Yeah, this is a party. It's like you got to take a sip of beer every time it makes a bubble. <laughs> You're going to be lit after that. And, and so, I don't know, in your neighborhood, I know Pemberton goes crazy as well with um, all the noisemakers. Um, and it's such a cool thing, this rev for support that um, we've sort of started and people all across um, all across the globe have been sending in videos, rev for support, revving their engines, whatever, their dirt bikes, uh, their side by sides, And I think it's been super awesome. Give us your take on this rev for support for all the healthcare workers. And Yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's, it's really cool, honestly, every night to hear the noise and the people celebrating for all these at seven it's like yeah it's so it's so important to acknowledge it so get on those throttles yeah can you see the bubbles hell yeah <laughs> i i swear i'm not in the bath <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah that is awesome and for all those people who've sent in videos and tagged ski do and rep for support please keep doing that this is um again and Tatum's the perfect example, as you can tell just by meeting her. She's super bubbly, super fun, and just keeping that positive vibe, vibe to um, everybody that you meet on the street, if you're out riding your bike, uh, if you are working, going to work, talking to them on the phone, or just passing people by when you're out walking, getting some exercise. Um, pass on that positive energy, because not everybody is lucky enough to sort of have tons of it. And in a tough time like this, they could be struggling, they could be not have a partner, they could be single, have no animals, and so they go home to kind of an empty house, not a house that's full of lots of people doing lots of cool stuff. So just remember, take it easy on people and pass on the stoke. Yeah, smile goes a long way. Totally. So um, someone already asked, what's your IG handle? It's so easy. How can you just, it's your name. Tatum, yeah, add Tatum Minogue, easy. Right on. So I know we talked a little bit about what uh, you do in the ski world, uh, but you actually came from snowboarding. Kind of. I don't know if I can fully claim that because I, I snowboard. Yes, I snowboarded before I skied and I think I was around six or seven, but I really only went up the mountain a couple days. And then, yeah, it's funnily enough, I just didn't start skiing till I was 12. I remember the first day of skiing quite vividly because I was pretty old um but yeah it's uh it's definitely unique especially given the fact that my family has such deep roots in the sport of skiing and you kind of think it would be something not forced on me but like passed down and kind of like you know here, here's your skis you gotta go but I just never never really uh had that so it's kind of nice maybe your first words were snowboard and then they're like uh we're not giving her skis until she's 12. <laughs> yeah that's like much. the equivalent of going in the corner you, you got your skis taken away until 12. yeah pretty well i guess my dad said to me when i was six he's like well we're gonna go skiing and i i said i want to go snowboard and my dad goes well if you want to snowboard like you got to find yourself a snowboard because we don't have any and a <laughs> little me little six-year-old went into the rental shop and asked for a snowboard and they gave me one that day and that this was just like at Mount Northway and bam tiny tiny little resort and my dad I walk out with a snowboard and my dad's just like beside himself <laughs> well I think that shows the sport of snowboarding like I I also I came from I started skiing 
and at a pretty little bit late, I think that might have been earlier than 12, I got ski lessons at Gross Mountain for Christmas. I thought I, I wanted a ghetto blaster. And uh, that's how old I am, Tatum. I don't even know if you know what a ghetto blaster. You might know what a ghetto blaster is by seeing it on a GIF that might come across the uh, the Instagram when you're when you're posting to your stories. You're like, what is that box, and why is that person dancing next to the box? That's a no. I blaster. have one too, Dave. I used to live <laughs> with Spice Girls on it, and the best. Sick. So I wanted one though for so badly, and then I got this piece of paper, and to my my dismay I opened it up and it was like ski lessons and I was like what and anyway not no one in my family skied so I uh, my parents would drive me up and then after those lessons because it was like they were I'm not gonna lie they were horrible it was foggy it was rain it gross mountain right and uh, but every day after that was the best and I used to beg my parents every weekend after that to drive me to gross mountain and I lived in kind of in um Kitsilano Arbutus area so that was a pretty far drive and when they one day they didn't so I took the bus and that <laughs> took like four hours and then people always ask me like where do you get your sense of adventure and I'm like that must have been where it was like when they said no I'm like I'm taking the bus and I remember when you were a kid you didn't like walk down the street with your shoes and then your ski boots I was I walked to the bus stop in my ski boots and my skis and all, all the stuff I had because I had no place to put anything else. And I sat, I remember going down Hastings Street and people were like looking at me like, why is this kid wearing ski boots and ski clothes? <laughs> oh but, my God. But, you know, it, it made me, it set me down a path which, it, you know, is, is worked for the better. So I think it's pretty cool these little stories we have from childhood that, you know, they might not always be Oh, they don't even have to be positive. They could be a little bit negative, but they we we turn it it tur teaches you to turn things around. Yeah, for like the things you do now, right? When it gets hard out there, you're like, whatever. Take matter into your own hands. I like yeah. that. I had to go. I had to go and get my own snowboard when I was six. <laughs> Just take it. Take the reins. <laughs> Run with it. <laughs> so tell us also because you have a very unique background. You also love hunting and fishing. Yeah, actually, I just got into hunting this last summer. Um, I went on my first hunting trip to the Yukon, 14 days on horseback. The experience of my life, it was honestly the cool, one of the coolest things I've ever done. And I have a freezer full of meat to show for it. So to me, there's nothing like, you know, knowing exactly where your food's coming from and talk, I mean, talk about, talk about organic. I can yep. right down to the very mountaintop, say we're my my red meat's coming from so that's pretty special in and of self um but yeah so just got into hunting but i've been fishing since i was like three i mean some of my first life memories are just being in my dad's drift boat and uh fishing on the bow river in banff so cool. yeah just super lucky to have been brought up in in nature and in the outdoors yeah and i think like especially fishing because it's such a I don't know. It's such a patient sport and you, and it's such a thoughtful sport. Like you have to think and you, you have to be one almost like the fish, right? Like you have to do all these things that, I don't know, when you're a young person, um, you don't really have a lot of that. So it must've been cool to sort of learn that from your dad and your family and then kind of like, you know, see the, I guess the rewards come to those who wait, especially with fishing. Oh, for sure. It's a really nice um, kind of, it accompanies my skiing and my snowmobiling really nicely because those things are so action orientated and I'm so go, go, go all winter that it's really nice to kind of take a step back and hit the reset button in the summer and just be on the rivers or saltwater fishing. And it, it just totally rejuvenates me. It's like, yeah, it's my favorite thing next to skiing and snowmobiling. Cool. Well, my good friend, Pete Nori, who snowmobiles and he's a helicopter pilot and he fishes. He's like, let's go heli fishing. So sign me up. Yeah. And I have to go because I'm kind of Tatum's agent <laughs> on the fishing trips. Just the fishing trips. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, Tell I am. I'm not going to say I'm a terrible fisherman because I, I don't really 
it's just not something I've done a lot, but I totally admire it. I have a really good friend, Chris Bowers. He also, this year, rode his snowmobile. When we had that really low, cold weather, he rode his snowmobile up one of the rivers and had a little fire by the river and caught, like, this amazing trout. And it, it was like, I was like, dude, that, I want to do that. And much like um, we're going to, we still haven't done it yet, but we are going to do it where I go out fishing with Tatum. She's going to show me how to fish. <laughs> and we're going to capture it, which I think will be really cool because it just shows a different side of you from the super gnarly side, even though not to say that you're not a gnarly fisherman, it's just, you know, <laughs> but, but it's a little bit different than doing backflips off giant cliffs and, and super deep lines, right? So it, it, it is, it's such a, do you find that's a yin and yang for you? That's exactly it. Yeah, that was the term I was looking for. It's just feels really nice to be able to just take a step back and, and kind of less less extreme and more just present and in the moment and it, like I said it totally resets me but the salmon fishing is like world famous where you are in Squamish so I have a lot to learn about salmon fishing I grew up trout fishing so it's it's quite different but um I'd definitely love to come down and get on the water with you I think we'd have a lot of fun yeah that would be super rad and uh, I w I'm sure I'd le lose, uh, learn a lot. I also, just in case uh, things are a little dicey and we don't catch anything, I have a buddy, he has a giant natural swimming pool and it's stocked with like 250 fish. Let's do it. That sounds, yeah, so, that sounds just as fun to me, honestly. I can, I can tell you how easy they're to catch because I dove in there one day and got bit. By a trout? Yeah, can you? And, no. And, no, are you serious? Yeah, and he didn't believe me, and I was like, I got bit, and then, um, and then the next day I had a full scrape on my calf, and he's like, I didn't believe you, but another guy also dove in like um, two months before and got bit because they were like, I think in a frenzy because we were throwing like some food in. <laughs> That's great. I think you might be one of the first people in history to ever get bit by a trout. <laughs> yeah, that's. That's what he, that's what he said, and I I kidding, I'm not kidding you. I had the scab and everything to believe it. I had like the little little marks, and uh, yeah. So they I I actually was scared. Like when I dove in and kind of just it, it kind of got me on the calf, and I was like, he's put piranhas in here because that is something he would do. And uh, and uh, but no no piranhas, but yeah. So you never know. But anyway, we got that as a backup plan. And if that doesn't, if that fails, like if I'm so bad, we have, uh, we got some markets, we could just go get a fish. True. True. Cause, uh, I will tell you this story of me fishing. My dad took me fishing when I was really young. And I remember it was out in pit meadows on the pit river and we never caught anything. So we did go to the supermarket and we bought a fish hey. and claim and claim that we caught it. <laughs> no shame. <laughs> So, nothing wrong with that yeah so tell me um with your ski background when was the day that you decided that a snowmobile would be a really good way to get to ski terrain i mean where i live in pemberton i'm just surrounded by you know i mean you know just the yeah. best backcountry in the world and it's kind of silly not to have a snowmobile to access it because it's just such an efficient way to get in there and get deep and there's just endless train i mean i've been sledding here for five six years now and i haven't even slightly scratched the surface on it so it just yeah makes me so excited to think of like how many more adventures there are to come and how much terrain there is still to discover yeah and we we this is probably a good time to mention that uh one year ago was on the it was on the 15th, I believe, we lost Dave Treadway and uh, just outside of Pemberton. And, um, and that was one year ago. And I remember that day I was actually at Carl's place when I came home and found out. And I literally just sat in my chair. I knew Dave for a while. And, um, and uh, we always chatted. And I, 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 we talked a few things because I used to help him with uh, ABS packs. And I, it was so – it just hit me right – it just hit me right in the – bottom of my gut and especially for anybody that knew him which was a lot of people in Pemberton and Whistler and Squamish and and uh, I know you knew Dave did you not yeah yeah I knew Dave very well and I know his <laughs> wife and his brother Daryl is actually my neighbor so cool yeah well, make they're, your... they're an incredible family 
yeah, they are an incredible family and, and everybody knows Dan as well. And, and we should, uh, you know, make sure you pass that on to Daryl that we're all uh, sending huge love and vibes for Dave. Cause he's still, he, obviously he's out there and he sees what's going on. And uh, to his wife, Tessa and man, they're three kids. I always watch their stuff. And, yes. and um, I think the, the, the biggest thing he'd be sad about is all, a lot of the, some of the stuff that he's missing with his kids. But man, you don't, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You just have to look at his kids and you're reminded of Dave. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. On the one year uh, anniversary of his death, his passing, we drove up the meadows and just did a little drive by to his old truck that was set up with a photo memorial and some flowers and the whole family was there. His mom and dad were there and just to show the love. And yeah, it was a beautiful sunny day. Like one of the nicest days we've had so far this spring and Dave was definitely shining his light that day. Yeah, he, he literally was the glue that held it. a huge community of skiers, snowboarders, and sledders, um, and people that just, you know, his slogan, Chase Life, um, he just held that all together, right? And, and it doesn't matter what background you come from, uh, Dave didn't care, and he was just psyched to be out, and he was always letting it, you know, he's the perfect example, like we talked this rev for support, it's, I never seen that guy not give someone a smile. It was just that's who he was. That's who his embodiment was, and that's what you got from him. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Chase life is like such an incredible takeaway from that, from all of that, and that's exactly what Dave embodied. And even with what's going on now, you know, with COVID, and we're all locked up and kind of stuck at home, it makes you appreciate even more so those days that we do have in the mountains and. I know when all this clears, I'm going to be even more grateful and I'm going to chase life even harder when it's all said and done. Yeah, you're going to ride out of your house on the dirt on your sled down to the river with your gun and your fishing rod. And you're like, yeah. I got to get it all in on one day. Cause I don't multi -sport. know. It's multi-sport. That's like the ultimate triathlon, hunting, fishing, and sledding. I bet you could do some hunting off of a snowmobile. That's never... Or a sea do. Yeah, That's there you go. Yeah. my mind. There you go. So what would you say to some of the athletes out there who are ski touring? I love ski touring, and I do a ton of sled skiing. I mean, maybe I should start with this. What do you say to people that are like, when are you going to leave your sled behind and just, or your skis behind and just sled? I say never to that, yeah. definitely. I mean, yeah, it's just, I, I, I do get out and, and tour off of my snowmobile, but it's the access that I gain with my sled that is just, I mean, it's priceless, just so efficient. And it gets me to these areas that without, it would take me days and days and days without. So kind of a no brainer. I'll never give it up. Yeah. I'm the same way. And you're, I mean, you're way more extreme uh, than I am, but I, what I love about skiing is, on the days when it's not uber deep and, but it like, those days are just magical for skiing. And uh, a lot of people don't even go out on those days or they just go on tours. Whereas those turn into just epic ski days or epic uh, touring off your sled or even pow surf days. Cause I also pow surf and I know you do too. Oh yeah. That's, that's my, one of my favorite things to do. It's like surfing and snowboarding combined in the mountains is the best. Yeah. Well, Ryan Crocker says sled ski touring is what it's about. I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Yeah, which, Ryan. Yeah, which is so rad to hear. And I, I don't think, you know, I think people always like they want to have like what's best. And I think you like what sleds do is they just make every day so amazing because the sledding's awesome. But then when you ski, when you think of where you'd get to on skis and then you get to on a sled, it's even crazier. And then on those days when you go out on a pow surfer, and for those of you who don't know, a pow surfer is like a snowboard with no bindings. And it doesn't make sense until you do it. But when you do the first turn on a pow surf, not with no bindings on a pow day, and you take that first turn, it is like, it's life changing. It's like, it, the, I say it. <laughs> I've never surfed a 10 foot wave, um, but it, it would be like surfing the ultimate 10 foot glass barrel wave that you survive. 
for sure. Something about it. It's like, it's really weird at first. And a lot of people kind of like, at least that I've gone out with are kind of like struggling with it right off the bat. But momentum's your friend, I find. And as soon as you like get enough and gravity kind of takes you and you're able to like lean in to those turns, it's just like, oh, I, now that's all I want to do. That's all I'm going to dream about tonight. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like you suck when you're going slow and you're new. You're like, how do people do this? And then all of a sudden you get enough confidence to drop in and then you're like, I'm Kelly Slater. <laughs> yeah. Or, or better, I'm Tatum Minogue. I'm like, I'm killing it out here. Well, and, and the sleds are just the best tool for that again, because it's like, you need untouched powder for it. The minute you hit a track, it's the board just flies out from under your feet. So yeah, having a snowmobile is like the snowboard and the snowmobile are just two tools that go hand in hand. Yeah, and the other great thing about it is that you can always take your your um, your pal surf no board up, and if it's good sledding, you just throw it in the trees, and you're wearing all the same clothes you'd wear for sledding. And then it, after you get a whole bunch of pal laps, you're like, hey, let's go hit that on the pal surfer, and then you just grab the pal surfer no board, and you're like, you're you're in the you're in the goods, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I love I love thinking about this. It's been a while. I've had to like kind of take skiing, snowmobiling, and snowboarding out of my brain just to stay sane. But it's fun to talk about. <laughs> yeah, and I have a grassroots board just like you. And Jeremy Jensen, who makes those boards down in Washington, he's, like, amazing. And I don't know if you saw his last video, but his last video is awe-inspiring. It was so awe-inspiring, I phoned him up, and I was like, I need the board that you just shot that video with because that I'm hoping that board will make me look exactly like you did. Oh, yeah. He's, he signed a poster for me like five years, four or five years ago when I got my first snowboard. And it's in my, in my garage and it says, Tatum, surf the white wave. Jeremy. I'm like, yes. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And he's so pumped on snowmobiles. He just bought, he snow checked a new one. And uh, he loves sledding. We chat all the time because when he's usually ordering, he's like, hey, I'm going to ask me all these questions. And I'm like, yeah, you want this? You want this? And uh, he does the same for me with, with the pow surf. And, and so we have a real good connection there. And he, he's just a rad dude. So, oh, um, but what would, so what would you say to those people uh, who are skiing, snowboarding, and they kind of want to, they see sleds, they don't really know what's going on. They, like, what would you say to, the, to them, like, if they're interested in getting a sled for access and getting to all these spots? Oh, for sure. Well, first off, I want to give my brother, I can see him on here, a shout out because it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Nick. I love hey, you. happy birthday, Nick. <laughs> yeah, love you, big brother. Um, he's joking because he says he is an old, old sled. I gave him my 2016, uh, which is a good sled, Nick. You can hang on to that till I'm done with my three ride. Then maybe you can have that one. But anyway. hey, Nick. Hey, Nick, these bubbles are for you, buddy. Woo! Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> that's awesome um but yeah back to your question dave um yeah i think i think initially it is a little daunting getting into sledding you know especially as a female it's kind of like where do you start who are your riding buddies what machine do you get what track length what size net? like you know it's all new but i think just finding a mentor and finding someone that's willing to come out and be be patient with you for those first few weeks or months while you get your your throttle figured out and, and even loading and unloading. Um, just, yeah, finding one person who's really or a few friends who are willing to, to really uh, kind of guide you is, is definitely essential. And um, also it's worth mentioning going out with people that, you know, have have the the knowledge and the whereabouts in the mountains because you, you really want to be safe out there and having at least your AVI 2 credentials is super important. Yeah, exactly. And you know how it's going to happen, girl? You and me are going to make videos on it. Yeah, we haven't even gone out yet, Dave. We got cut off this winter, next season. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I think it would be awesome that we could really provide people, like we just had a question there, like what do you do for ski boots? Uh, what do you do for ski boots when you're riding and going out skiing for the day? I keep them on a bag on my tunnel. And yep. then I, ne I never snowmobile with ski boots. Like, I absolutely refuse. Even if we're just sledding a couple K, uh, like, 
jumping from zone to zone, I'll take the boots off and reboot at the next zone because I just refuse to. There, it's like bear traps. You're, I mean, you're Bambi on ice with those. Yeah. Things. So it's like the the bag on the tunnel is essential. Yeah, I totally. And our link, it's just so people know, the link waterproof forty liter bag actually fits easily a pair of ski boot uh, bags, and it takes up one. Uh, it takes up. Uh, goes right into your link system and then you throw your boots in there and when you get to your spot you can just throw your boots back in there and put your ski boots on and away you go I do, it a, and everything. Yeah, I do it a little bit differently because i i use touring boots so uh, i have like a vibram sole so usually i decide beforehand that i'm gonna ski that day like it might be after a couple of days of ride and it starts to get punched out a bit and then and then all the lines that are left are good ski lines and then you know that you're going to be able to double all those lines because it is, it's been pounded out a bit. And so I go up and I just ski boots right from the truck. And, and the good thing about touring boots is you can put them in walk mode and run them pretty slack. And it's definitely not as good, but nice. They don't slide around like regular ski boots. And I wouldn't be able to ski the lines that Tatum does anyway. Um, but yeah, when you're skiing your type of style of skiing, you really want to be in ski boots, in the locked, in like, good boot bindings and and all that so there's two options for people to do there and and uh, i think that's really you know it's important again like you say to have someone that can show you those that uh, also have someone who's open a lot of times people get friends that are like it has to be this way and then they tell me those things that the person has said and i'm like that's not true at all no. you have to have someone that is open to uh, adaptability to someone's budget uh, not everybody can afford to go get um, uh, cheetah factory racing ski rack or the skidoo rack or all these things that cost money they might have to add those things at certain times and and that's the great thing that you can do to a skidoo sled is you can get one thing and then next time you can get another thing and you could save up for it and and but it's nice to have that person who's understanding of that and that's what i try to do when i do videos too is like hey it's not just like yeah buy the most expensive stuff it's like that's not the way I did it from the beginning. And I'm sure that's not the way you did it from the beginning either. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I want to say too, you got me thinking about putting on those frozen ski boots. Um, this is going to sound a little redneck, but I discovered a really good trick this winter. And I'll dig a little hole where my exhaust is. <laughs> I'll put the boot in the hole and then I'll rev my engine and the boot like... I mean, you got to be careful because it can almost melt, but your foot will slide right in there and the boots are toasty warm. It's like the best thing I ever discovered. I can't, can't believe I didn't figure that one out sooner. <laughs> and you're probably cooking like a moose burger in there too. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got the, the grilled cheese on the muff pot. <laughs> <laughs> so redneck. It's so, you know what, everybody's got a little bit of redneck in them and that's so rad, right? Um, <laughs> because they're just such the, the best ideas and especially with the sport of sledding when you're out there and it's cold and windy and man, what makes your day is just warm ski boots or like a warm sandwich that you laid against your muffler for, you know, five minutes while you ripped around and, and now you got a warm sandwich, right? Oh, totally. That's one of the high, that's kind of like, the point for me being out there is like enjoying it and really like loving it and and having a bit of a party like you can't take it too seriously right like i just yeah. love to be, go out and have a good time and a lot of times i will i'll bring a grilled cheese and i'll throw that against like in my muff pot or against the can and then i have a yeti of of tomato soup and i'm just like eating a great meal out there and you're in you're back there it's it's i love it uh, that's that is rad. Now, when you're on these rad ski shoots, have you ever been standing there cold and waiting, and then you're like, "I wish I had my snowmobile here, right here, because I just side hill over there and get some cow laps, and then go up there, and then ghost ride my sled off that cliff, and then hit that cliff, and then slide into this zone, and then blast the cameraman." Oh, for sure. There, I mean, there were a few days this winter where I went up with the intention to shoot skiing. But I'm, I'm not going to lie. I never put my ski boots on. I was just sledding the whole day. And the photographer that was with me that, at the time ended up getting a bunch of really wicked sledding shots of me unintentionally. Like, I was just rooping around. But he's like, oh, that's there's some action. 
And yeah, it's just, it's hard. It's hard not to, because the sleds are just so fun. All the, all the sledders, including me right now, are going, you're slipping. You're like, slipping. You're like, what skis? I never had skis on this thing. <laughs> yeah. You got to be careful, though, because if you're side hilling too hard, you can cat your tip can catch and you snap a ski. I remember one year, Rosie made these big the S7s with a big scoopy tip, and I broke like four or five sets of skis that winter. I called my Rosie TM. I'm like, hey, Reem, I broke another pair of skis. <laughs> He's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> I've, I've done two pairs of my wife's skis. <clears throat> So now the new rule is, especially with the G4, is like, no roofing with skis on. Yeah. You just go straight. You're like, straight. I don't want to see that ski lift, mister or missus. You just <laughs> go straight. And uh, I, I also I also bent Pete Norrie, who's the heli pilot. I, I bent his snowboard in half. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that cost me a lot of beer. Oh, uh, and, no. And the, and the snowboard. It was like, I gave him another snowboard. He's like, he's still like, you still owe me a lot of beer. Oh, I was shit. Like, yeah. That, that yeah. sucks. I, two years ago, I bought a new truck. I was like, I'm just doing it. You know, like I, I earned this. I'm, I'm going for it. It was my baby. And I had my snowmobile all loaded up. I had a set of skis on the back. And I kind of forgot I had the skis on there. So my, my spatial awareness was a bit off. And I went in reverse, <laughs> reversed into my new truck with my skis. I broke the skis and dented the whole side box of my vehicle. I was like, wow, that this is an expensive day. Like, not okay. You're like, now I look like I live in Pemberton. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. This is going to be, I'm going to put you on the spot right now because you've only met all of us, uh, your, all your teammates, like once or twice. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to say the teammate and you're going to give me the word that describes the, the person. Okay. Okay. Carl Kuster. A boss. Oh yeah. I, I call him team captain. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Rob Alford. The kindest man uh, alive. I, there's a lot of people that disagree with you, but... Yeah, I think he's just the nicest, softest person. He's I, he's very approachable to me. I, I've always gotten so much warmth from him. I really like Rob. Rob's rad, and he's, he's a new dad, so I love seeing him carrying his little son. It's awesome. Aw. Yeah, it used to be a Ryan Coke, and now he carries his son. So it's way, it's way <laughs> cuter. It's a healthy lifestyle change. <laughs> yeah, totally. Way to go, Rob. Uh, Jeremy Mercier. Jeremy, oh, funky. All right. Hey, hey Jeremy, sorry. It's, they're not my words. They're hers. Uh, <laughs> Jay, Jay Manaberry. Oh, Jay, he's a wild man. He's, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to just have one worders for these, but wild man's two words. He's crazy. I love that guy. And he is so talented. Holy crap. Was he born a snowmobile or what? Yeah, he's he's a rad dude. My favorite part of club was when he posted that story falling into the laundry bin going, ah, this is my, my home for tonight. <laughs> uh, Ashley Chaffin. <clears throat> Bubbly. Yeah, because she was your roommate in Cancun. So you guys, yeah. you, know, you know her the best. And at CKMP <laughs> as well. So she's just like, I was, I remember being a little intimidated to meet Ashley, you know, because she's, She's been on the team a long time, and she's just an incredible snowmobiler. And she's from Alaska. I kind of thought she'd be like a bit burly or whatnot, but she was just the nicest, most welcoming, sweetest person to me right off the bat. And I really appreciated that. Yeah, she's tough. I've had to run from her a few times. <laughs> did you did you sleep with one eye open when you were like first night? You're like, I don't know, like is it PC <laughs> against Alaska? It's like, I don't know what to do here. Yeah, Ashley is amazing. Love her. Uh, Tony Jenkins. Tony. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> hey, keep it clean. This is a family show. I just don't even know how where to go. Um, oh, Tony. He is one of a kind. That's the yeah. only way I think that could describe him. 
Yeah, few people do. I uh, now I can only when I look at Tony, I only see him on the athlete bus after a night of partying with lots of pizza pieces on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Tony. And it was awesome because usually it's me. It wasn't me this time. It was Tony. <laughs> Uh, Charles Gagne. Humble. Yeah, and he's a wicked chef. Is he? I didn't know that about him. Yeah, when you pay, when you check out his stories, he's always cooking like these awesome meals. Like, yeah, I know you like to get down on the sourdough making whatever. I do stuff. sourdoughs. I do pies. I do. My next episode is gonna be cocktail. I want both. Do you want a Negroni tutorial or a margarita tutorial? That's Those are my two favorite drinks. I'm going to do the next episode is going to be one of those. Rad. I can't wait. Matt Downey. Matt. Um, he reminds me of the Big Lebowski. <laughs> yeah. He is a real redneck. Like, when you think you're getting redneck, you're like, just go spend five minutes with Matt, and you're like, I, I'm not even, I'm a beginner redneck. <laughs> uh, Rob Koning. I don't, I don't really know Rob super duper well yet, but just a nice all around guy is the only way I could say. Well, you don't know him that well because he used to be a uh, F-16 pilot and none of those guys are nice, right? You, you want to keep your daughters away from those guys. <laughs> But and and now he's like he's trying to he's trying to downplay it because now he's a FedEx pilot so you just don't know which way to go with Rob. I call him either I call him FedEx or F sixteen. He's calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> those are all dangerous things for all those girls looking for dates. You don't want calm, cool, and collected. Okay, noted. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> uh, Brett Rasmussen, Rasmataz. trying to think he's he seems a little like loose like you know he's tight but loose and he i don't know he just knows how to have a good time it seems yeah he's and he wears giant belt buckles also stay away from guys that wear giant belt buckles <laughs> uh you're Jeff really putting me on the spot here Dave. i know i know but this is awesome you are like you're like a true champ you are living up to the um Jeff Jeffrey Hahn, so he's from Newfoundland, right? And he does all the utility side. And you remember, you might, you must have remembered Jeff, but he's pretty quiet. I never met him. No. Okay, well, Jeff is he's he's quiet, but he's unassuming. He's like a super nice guy, and you normally I'd say you never date nice guys, but he's a guy that you'd be like, but this guy seems okay. I don't think he is. But you think he would, he sort of is, I think. Some under the exterior there. And then what about me? And uh, you can say anything, doesn't matter. Oh, God, Dave, I don't even know where to begin with you. You're just, <laughs> you are the team captain to me, I think. You bring everyone together. You are so outspoken. And, yeah, every, anytime you walk into the room, everyone just kind of relaxes. Well, hey, checks in the mail. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, you, you read that note that I sent you perfectly. <laughs> so, hey, how did your winter, your first winter with Ski-Doo go? I, it, I, like, we all know it wasn't the perfect winter for all the things that are going on. But as winters go, like the start, the start and middle, and obviously we'll avoid the end because the end really never happened. But, but tell us, like, not only just how, how it was, but how, from your point of view, being with ski -Doo. I mean... Such a cool experience so far. Just like you just listed everybody. I got to meet all those people and they're so special in their own ways and so welcoming. And then going to CKMP was such a cool experience for me. It was like the equivalent of a cat ski lodge, but for snowmobiling and kind of blew my mind, like walking into that garage with hundreds of ski dudes and all the accessories. And it was like a little mini Stop. it was insane um, yeah. and the train and everything like um, very very cool uh, and then of course going to Cancun unbelievable really 
nice to take a mid-season breather there and, and get some sunshine for a few days and talk about sleds and stay excited for getting in the snow when I got home. But, uh, yeah, not to dwell, but I definitely didn't um, – get the finish to the season that I hoped, you know, like those, my favorite sled days are in the spring when we have those, those long days up on the glacier. And that's kind of the peak of the season for me. And that's also when I, I do get a lot of my shots. So yeah, a bit, a bit difficult, but you know, can't, can't complain too much. We're all healthy and happy. And that's all that matters. Yeah, I think, yeah, and that's a big thing is not only, and it's for all of us, right? Like, <clears throat> we can get lots of great footage in the beginning of the season. It's really hard for skiers, too, because um, <clears throat> stuff doesn't fill in, and then it's really dangerous once it does initially. So you really bank on those those end days of March and April and May when it's still cold up high. You get really nice snow. You get the sun, obviously, the beautiful backdrop. And, and that really never materialized for you. But, you know, the stuff that I saw you do, I mean, you always have fun and you're always pushing it and you're always, um, you always involve so many people. So that's, you know, to your bonus, it doesn't really matter that, that we missed that last bit. But I, I, I know that when we get to see more of the last bit um, next year, it's just going to be even more crazy and, and more awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I think it is really hard for all of us and for everybody, but I think you really did... Uh, you know, thanks for putting it in perspective that, you know, really what matters now is we get as many healthy people out of this and, and we learn uh, moving forward what we can do and, and how we can do it better so that we don't have such a, you know, maybe a, a shock to the system where everything shuts down, but maybe we learn how to better manage things and that keeps people working and then like keeps people out and, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, What sled did you ride this year? I... What sled am I getting for next year? No, I'm going to ask you that, but what sled did you ride this year that you oh, love? Oh, I rode a 54 free ride. And and tell us about it. It was incredible. Uh, definitely the nicest sled I've ever had. It's having the, the tweakable shocks was really cool because when I do pack my sled down with a lot of gear, it was really nice, especially in the whoops, to be able to – crank those shocks and, and have a little bit more or less suspension depending on what I wanted. Um, and yeah, that, I, I had people just every day, Hey, can I, can I ride your sled? Can I take it for a little mini rip? And I'm like, oh, I guess so. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of my baby. And I find too that like, I really, I really build and it sounds funny because it's obviously it's a machine it's a material item but I build like a relationship with my snowmobiles after one season I like I love it more I it's kind of just yeah. becomes part of me and I just enjoyed that sled so much that yeah the new one that I have coming I'm gonna have to like build a, my relationship up again if that makes sense well I, no it makes perfect sense and I don't I think you put it perfectly of how how passionate we are at whatever the sport is that you know, when you ski off a uh, uh, first uh, descent on skis, it's like you want to take those skis. And, you know, at first you're not like that, so you won't do it. But then at the end of the season, you might go like, I'm going to retire these skis and they're going to be on my wall because every time I look at this, I'm going to remember that. For sure. And, and, and I, I do the same thing. Like I look at the sleds and I go, oh, I remember where this took me or did that. And yeah, I remember sure. doing that trip. And it just, you know, it's like anything, right? A musical instrument. It's like your favorite pen that you like to write on or whatever. If you're a business person, it's, it really does uh, matter. And, and so as hard as it is, what are you going to replace it with for 2021? <laughs> Summit X with expert in a turbo. <laughs> You're gonna burn. You're gonna burn your skis. I know. I can't believe I did it, but I'm going turbo. I thought a lot about it and kind of went back and forth on it. But at the end of the day, it was kind of a no-brainer. It's like having a little bit of extra power is never a bad thing when I want it. And I think I'm gonna have to like tweak my riding a little bit and just be be a bit more on it. Um, I did get the chance to ride one for just a minute at Carl Carl's spot, but they're powerful things. So 
yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. You're going to, you're, I'll tell you honestly, cause I've spent a lot of time on them. You're going to love it. It's going to be perfect for you. And the nice thing about the turbo, the 850 turbo is that it's, it's not, you know, like I said before, it almost, it almost needs a new name other than turbo because it's so clean and so crisp and, and so quick and right there all the time. That when you ride, when you when you want to just ride around at the beginning of the season, when you're just getting your, you know, and you're, you're trying to hard move that you're not too sure about, you don't, it isn't just like on, it, it's rides like your normal sled. And then all of a sudden you might need a little help because it was steeper than you thought, or you're going to, and out you come. And so you, you'll, you will just, um, the only thing you have to do is, uh, again, like you are, adaptability and open mind and don't think of what was and you it'll be a day and you'll be like never going back baby yeah it'll be like team ocean was back in the day where it's like you you make the switch and then there's not going back you fall into the dark side yeah well that's awesome and you're gonna love that sled so hey we got like five minutes four minutes left because they cut us off in an hour and it just flew by because you're so rad What's your best day on snow? Ever? Ever. Ooh. Oh, boy. Well, there's so many, but off my snowmobile, my best day on snow was uh, last season. And we were in a zone which I zipper mouth creek is what I'll call it. Yeah. <laughs> but just one of those days where you're with the best crew and we're accessing some of the nicest terrain in the best avalanche and snow conditions could have asked for and everything came together i got like five or six shots that day which was like unheard of almost and had the most fun and came home we all came home safe and yeah just couldn't ask for more yeah that is awesome um so what's your worst day you don't have, no bad days, maybe. Yeah, no bad days. Um, well, that day that I backed into my new truck with my son was a pretty bad day. <laughs> That's a bad day. Um, what's, well, another three years ago, no, sorry, this would have been four years ago now, um, I was snowmobiling in Utah with snowpacks a lot lighter, and it was early season, it was in January, and I was side-hilling downhill, and I hit a rock. And I just remember like lawn darting off of my sled and like everything went black. I didn't hit my head, but I just like, it just happened so quick. And I destroyed my sled. I mean like every A-arm, S-mod, E-mod, the whole engine was shifted sideways. There was a hole in the gas tank. Like it was completely total. And it just was the first or second day of the season. So that was an absolute devastation. <laughs> yeah, that is a bad day. Um, hey, last question. Uh, favorite mountains, Canada West, U.S. West, or Europe? Canada. Yeah, that a girl. Um, hey, I just want to say thank you so much for spending the whole hour with little Dave Nerona here in Squamish. Like, look how I'll show, – I'll show you my knees. Look at my knees. <laughs> I, it looks – I look like I peed my pants. I thought you said you had a carbon fiber umbrella. That thing's not doing too well for you, Dave. And, and look how big it is. It's like so massive. It's ridiculous. It's, that's how hard it's raining in squat. You're lucky I'm not down at the river right now, like floating on this chair. <laughs> but I, I just want to say thank you so much. Of course, everybody should be following Tatum Minot on uh, her Instagram and Facebook. And uh, you can, uh, you'll be able to see this video later on. I'm going to upload it probably tomorrow on YouTube. And uh, what do you, do you have one thing you want to say to your fans? Uh, I love you guys. And stay healthy, stay positive, and get out. We look forward to some days of getting out next season. And, yeah, it's going to be something to look forward to at least. And, yeah, and I want to say, well, as we go out, uh hey everybody take care of yourself out there have fun and man i hope it stops raining soon and tatum <laughs> we are gonna hook up this summer and go sea doing and fishing we're gonna fish, fish. off of the sea dews
And then we're going to get picked up in the heli and then go do more fishing. Can't wait, Dave. It's happening. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, hey, we'll see you on Friday. We're going to have Blaine Matthews. He's going to teach us how to ride a bull. Woo. That see you later. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Bye, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Bye.